What's going on guys? My name is Triforce Addiction. Welcome back to another Let's Play video for Battle for Bikini Bomb Rehydrated, where we are playing this game one last time before Cosmic Shape, Co Cosmic Shape, Cosmic Shake releases. Uh, keep in mind, I'm still recording as of like the same day as I recorded the previous one. Um, I am still exhausted, so if you guys hear me like speaking gibberish, you guys already know why. But yeah, let's continue on. So in the last episode, we just went through like the introduction. We got everything that we needed in Bikini Bottom as of right now, as well as getting through the first part of Jellyfish Fields. So I believe we're in the second part of, you know, Jellyfish Fields. So right now we had to go rescue Patrick. Well, supposedly rescue him, but yeah, you guys already know how it goes. All right, so obviously you guys are gonna wanna turn over here because there is a hidden sock. I remember, dude, like as a kid, I struggled so much to get that sock, and it's so simple. I should do it again next time. You need to get Patrick to help him, but he's... Okay, whatever. So this is, like, basically, like, I guess, like, the first test to, like, see how good you are at combat. It's not really that hard. I mean, you just immediately <laughs> jump to, like, the platforms on the side and just take him out. Okay, so let's let's wipe these guys out. Let's get some shiny objects right here. Oh, dude, the combo system's kind of trash in this game. I, I would admit that. I know I know there are some people that complained about the combo system because uh, back in the original game, you were kind of like able to get higher combos. Like the the cap amount here, it's like I think it's like super monster combo, and that's it. Like I think like back in the original, it's like super ultra mega monster combo and then like you get like thousands of like shiny objects because of it they probably did that to like they probably made it like a super monster combo in this game just so we wouldn't get you know we wouldn't abuse the system you know and, and i understand because like the requirement was like the requirement to like get the all the golden spatulas for mr krabs with shiny objects was i believe like thirty-nine thousand five hundred, i believe so yeah i mean it was kind of expensive. I mean, it does still take a long time to grind that out, but um, not in Battle for Bikini Bomb. And even then, in that game, you could just, like, use the cheats. So it didn't really matter. Like, that would be, like, the very, very first thing I would do. Like, just use the cheat code to unlock, like, the shiny objects. Super easy. And you get, like, a thousand every single time you do so. So, like, the, the, the cheat was kind of short, so you could just repeat it, like, rapidly. And like within like maybe 30 seconds or like within 30 seconds to a minute you have like way more than enough to like pay Mr. Krabs. So you end up like going into uh, Jellyfish Field with like I think like 11 spatulas. That's like before entering the first level so it's kind of it's kind of crazy. Obviously they're not going to make the game this easy but it would have been fun to have that as like some sort of like easter egg. The rock is talking to me. Almighty rock. I am at your command! Down here, you big pink lummox! Oh, hi there, Mr. Plankton. Are you going to vaporize me today? So very tempting. Unfortunately, I found myself in the undesirable position of having to assist you. I was in an undesirable position yesterday, and now my neck hurts. <laughs> Heed my words, my large future minion. Go into Jellyfish Cave. Follow the instructions on the signs that you see. At the end of the caves, you'll still be a big pink idiot, but you'll know enough to help defeat the robots and get me back into the chum bucket. Well, then will you then? I might spare your life so I can force you to work in my sweatshop, making low quality design and knock off wallet. Yeah, you guys already know the Jordans, the, the Nikes. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen that. Like, if you guys live anywhere, like, near the border, like, of Mexico, like, like I think, in, like, in the downtown area of where I live, they actually sell like downtown versions of like certain brands. Like if you ever went to like, like if you ever saw the Nike knockoff, it just instead of having like a check mark, it would have like the N. So it, they would just call it Nike. Like I'm not even kidding. That was an actual thing. Um, I'm not sure if like may maybe some of you guys have seen that, but it's it's actually pretty hilarious. <laughs> like just having off-brand things. Like I've actually seen videos of like off-brand Wii's, off-brand PlayStations. And I think they're like mainly from China, but like somehow they run super well. I believe they have like some sort of like knockoff Wii within uh like in China, but like I think it's like some sort of Nvidia tablet where you can play Wii games and everything. But it just never I don't think it ever made it to like 
the U.S. I could be wrong about that, but you probably had to go like through, through this entire process to even get it. You know, like getting like you know the yen currency or whatever currency that they have over there. So yeah, it was very complicated to get it back. Well, like back in the day, I'm not even sure if they still sell them right now. Uh, that's the crazy thing. So, I mean, those things might be limited time, but I mean. Yeah, but it's kind of noticeable. Like, I, I saw clips of it where, like, you were playing, like, Super Mario Bros. Wii, but, like, the text was a little bit different. Like, they didn't want to get, like, I guess sued by Nintendo or whatever. But, yeah, like, it, it was it was the exact same game, but they had to, like, name it differently. I don't know why. But, yeah. Why? Well, I, just, I just said why. Like, they, they didn't want to get sued. So, yeah. <laughs> I would love to, like, one day get, like, a knockoff this system so I could just review. Boom. Like, they have some pretty good knockoffs one, knockoff ones. Like, they're, like, emulators for, like, SNES that they turn into, like, this little SNES uh, mini or whatever. You know, like, the series that Nintendo had with, like, the SNES and NES. Oh, but, like, you know, there are, like, better versions than that. You know, like, where you get to, like, input games or, like, download them from the computer. Kind of like that little RSI chip with, like, the DS. That you could just download any DS game that you wanted and just run it however you wanted to. Like, you know, it's kind of like shit like that. Like, very advanced stuff. I mean, even now, I still consider that to be advanced. It might be child's play to hackers, but I mean, you never know, really. Okay, I need to avoid this thing. Funny thing is, with this area, like, I think this is probably, like, the hardest part of the game for me. <laughs> Believe it or not, you think Squidward's platforming section is hard, but, like, getting these, uh... Like, getting, like, one of the hammers to be get, get thrown over there while dealing with the other hammer, or trying to get it there before the other hammer spawns in, is a pain in the ass sometimes. And, like, the hammer... The hammer robots in this game are kind of, like, spotty, at least in this version. Like, they don't... Like, they're, they're not always accurate with their hits. Like, sometimes... They won't even hit you and you'll still get hit and sometimes they'll hit you But you won't even be damaged or like you won't even like take the hit. It's weird God I'm so glad Clancy Brown came out for uh, <laughs> The cosmic shake It's nice that like, Clancy Brown's actually going to voice act mr. Krabs for the cosmic shake finally So they must have gotten paid a lot this time because I think last time like I don't know, like, I think he was, like, doing a movie or, like, voice acting a different game or something. So he couldn't really do Battle for Bikini Bottom. Or, I don't know, maybe they just didn't pay him as much as he wanted. Or, like, as much as he needed. But I, it's whatever, man. They could have kind of, like, had him voice act, you know, the lines and just put him in this game. But I guess they want to keep some of the original elements from, you know, the OG game, so... It makes sense in some ways. Like I kind of learned to live with it. Hello, Mrs. Pa Hello, Patrick. I've got a job for you. Oh boy! I found a gold. You know, throughout like the entire time that I've ever seen like SpongeBob or sorry, Patrick like like be around like Mrs. Puff, I never hear them actually communicate ever. I think really the only time they've ever spoken to each other when was with like I think it was when Patrick got the got his own driver's license like that was the only time they actually ever really truly spoke i mean there were times where he was around mrs puff like you know when they were trying to break her out of prison but we never they never even said a word to each other you know like spongebob's always been kind of like out of mrs puff's life like it's like you know, it's like if you if you kind of like have a group of friends, but like there's one like let's say you have a group of like five friends or whatever, like four maybe, and like there's like a pair of two that just never even said a word to each other, like ever. Like they they know the least about each other. It's kind of like that. There we go. Finally got them stunned. Is this the last one? Yeah, it is the last one. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, so we lowered down the water so we could get the spatula over here. See, there was like a glitch in like a speedrun, right? Where you could like kind of like get the spatula before you even lower the water. Uh, thanks to Shift. Honestly, all this stuff is possible because of him. Like, Shift was like the main primary reason as to like why we even got a remake in the first place. Like, if, if we're being real here, like, none of this would have happened without him. 
Like, we kind of needed him. Like, yes, we were kind of pushing for it for, um... Like, with Riders DX, me and Zack Pack and everyone else. But I think he kind of... His words carry more weight with them, I guess. I mean, even... Like, he even went to, like, their studio to, like, kind of, like, playtest the game and see, like, where they could, you know, improve. Like, he literally did that. So, I mean, they have very strong connections with them. So, I'm assuming he might get, like, another free copy. Um, hopefully he gets that fun edition or I guess the f what's the what's the new edition called the best friend edition for Cosmic Shake where you get like the figurines and all that stuff like this time around I'm not gonna get that version like that variation mainly because like the last time it was extremely expensive and it seems like they haven't really learned their lesson with that and the thing is that like you could just go to Amazon like within a few months later and you could get it for a much cheaper price like I remember when I saw the heart I was about to say the hardened edition but like the what was the the shiny edition? I think that was like the one with like one figurine. You could go on Amazon and just get that for like seventy dollars instead of like hundred and fifty. But like with the fun edition, I think that was like it went down to like hundred and fifty dollars instead of three hundred. So like you got it for like w like almost more than half of the of the original price. And I should have done that, but you know I'm a jackass. All right, so okay, we have to get rid of this thing. Oh, this is where you make like the majority of your shiny objects, right here. There we go. Look at that. It's gonna go straight up to four thousand four hundred or four thousand five hundred. I think also like the requirement. I think there's like another difference with like the shell requirement being like what two thousand to like even pass over here. I'm not like don't quote me on that, but I don't really remember. Like I haven't played the original game for a long time. I've been focusing just mainly playing on this one. I mean, because it's it's the most convenient one. I'll have to like boot up my like my Wii U and like go on the emulator thing, and it just takes so long to set up and everything. So yeah, I'd rather not. I mean, I could probably run it on my computer, but the problem is that like you know screen recording and doing all that stuff like it kind of like takes a toll on my computer. It's not really strong enough to handle like you know playing the game and just screen recording at the same time. Because, like, when it comes to, like, I think, like, recording with Elgato, like, on a console or something, it's a lot easier because the computer doesn't really have to process, uh, you know, the game through, like, the computer itself. It just processes it through, like, the encoder and, you know, all that stuff, like, through the console. So, they're not really, like, recording's, like, the only thing that the computer's actually doing. So, yeah, that's why, I think that's why it's, like, a lot easier. I'm not, I'm not a computer whiz. Again, like, don't quote me on that shit, but... That might be a, a huge factor as to why, like, it, I struggle with it. And keep in mind, I was, like, I was, like, having my computer resolution, like, at 1440. But my computer runs so well, like, when it's back at 1080. So, yeah. Like, I, I had to stop running 1440 because of, like, so many freaking freezing issues. So, yeah. Like, like I, like I have, like, a 1440p monitor, but I just run it on 1080. It is what it is. So, where am I? I have, like, 14... I have 14 socks. So we're making some pretty good progress right now. Uh, okay, God, I remember this. If you guys remember this seesaw right here? Where, like, it was so loose to the point where, like, people would actually end up falling off through the crack right here. Because they couldn't properly jump to, like, this ledge. <laughs> I don't know, the gravity of this game was kind of weird, especially when it came to the seesaw. Or I think they made it, I don't know, maybe too realistic, perhaps? Given the laws of gravity in real life. But I, I don't know. All right, so okay, I'm gonna get some more uh, shiny objects. Yes, sir. Okay, let's move up over here. Hey, yeah, I kind of miss manually doing the thing, like doing the whole, like I guess side or I guess the what do you call it? Wall tapping. Yeah, I think it's called the. You know, you know, I used to call it wall tapping. You know, any wall jumps, I would just call them wall tapping. But like, I kind of miss doing it manually. You had more control over it. And sometimes, like, with the wall tapping in this game, like, especially when you reach the Dutchman's Graveyard, where you have to, like, wall tap on that moving, uh, wall, it was, it was a pain in the ass. That's why I'd rather just do it the normal way where it's, like, controlled. Like, how it was on the original game. But, yeah, that's how it'd be, man. Like, this game's kind of weird. Step quietly there. That All right, we're getting, that's... we're gonna start fighting, uh, we're gonna start fighting, uh, what's-his-face, uh, King Jellyfish. Okay, so you, you, you guys see that little... I guess that's like the entrance of... Is that the entrance of uh, 
jellyfish fields? I think it is actually. Yeah, it is. So like the way that it's rendered, because I, I mentioned yesterday that like Sand Mountain was like badly rendered in the Switch version. And you see like how like badly rendered the mountains are right there, like where the entrance is to jellyfish fields. That's basically how Sand Mountain looked like. It, it just looked like that. It looked like absolute ass. I don't know if you guys actually noticed this, but if you actually look closely to like the little ring on the bottom of like the jellyfish, you could still kind of like see, I guess, the the programming boxes. I don't know if you guys actually noticed that, but like you have to like really take a close look. It's kind of funny. But like it's it's very it's it's not that noticeable. But like if you just pay just pay very close attention. There we go. Finish slapping. Yes. I love slapping king jellyfish. It just satisfies me in the inside, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Be like Kevin. I kind of wish I saw Kevin the Sea Cucumber. I feel like that was kind of like a missed opportunity in the original game. I'm sure they had like their ideas because I, I I'm not sure if like this game came out after Kevin was introduced. They brought him back, like in Camp Coral, but like they didn't bring him into this game for some reason. I think that that would have been a good like opportunity instead of having Bubble Buddy here like out of random like you know. Like with Bubba, like he seems very out of place with him. I think it would have been better if Kevin was here. You know, just kind of like saying that he can't do it, or is like he'd be like loser. Give him that little horn and be like loser, loser. Okay, let's get that little fifty shiny object thing. Okay, let's go down here real quick because this there's like a secret sock down here. There we go. So I think we have like all the socks that we need right now, but there might be one that we missed. So yeah, uh, we're probably going to have to go back and do that. Okay, so here we go with uh, 10 uh, spatulers. The spatula. Alright, so yeah, let's talk to Larry real quick. See, no problem. You can do anything you set your mind and your muscle to. I wonder what he, like, you know, the thing is that I usually get the spatula before, you know, I actually talk to this guy. So I wonder what he actually says before you collect the spatula. I should have done that. I don't know why I didn't. But yeah, let's go back to the entrance. Let's head back to uh, Bikini Bottom. Well, not Bikini Bottom, but Jellyfish Fields, the entrance. God, what's wrong with me? Damn. That's what happens when you're tired. Just looking at my phone real quick while I just wait wait for the game to fucking load. All right, so let's talk to Squiddy. Uh, yeah. Anything for my best friend Squidward? Can I rub some on? Uh, what? Go ahead, SpongeBob. Like I'm not homophobic or anything, but like there's so many, like, so, there's like so many subtle hints that SpongeBob might secretly like Squidward. I mean, there was even like an episode where, like, I think they're in the car. Like, with, he was in the car with Patrick, and then, like, he says bye to Squidward twice before he leaves, and even Patrick himself asks, like, why did you say, I think he said, like, why did you say bye to, uh, to Squidward twice, and he's just like, I like Squidward. <laughs> like, at face value, you would not think anything of it, especially if you're a kid, but, like, as you're an adult... Like, you, you just can't help but, like, wonder if he actually does have feelings for Squidward. I mean, I think Alex Bell even had a theory of, like, Squidward actually being in love with, uh... What's his face? Uh, Squilliam? Fancy Son? And, you know, that's not a far-off thing. I mean, there's even a point where he says, Oh my god, he's hot! You know, like, what if they were, like, partners prior to, like, you know, like, the Spongebob era? That's a curious thing, and the thing is that, like, we never really saw Squilliam within Camp Coral. Like, he, like, 
now that I think about it, it's weird that we haven't seen him. Like, they brought back a lot of classic characters. They even brought back the Sea Bear and Nosferatu. Of all people, they brought back fucking Nosferatu. But they did not fucking bring back Squillium Fancy Sun. Like, how the fuck do you not do that? I mean, it isn't like... What's his... What's his name? The... Roger... Roger Pumpass. Doesn't he fucking play a Squillium too? So, like, why would he... Like, why would he not have Squillium there? That's... That's so weird. <laughs> they brought back Nosferatu before they brought back Squillium, dude. Like, what the fuck? I don't know, man. Like the way that they pro that the the way that they went about kind of pro is weird. I I enjoy watching the show. It's pretty fun, but like even though I know a lot of people hate it because they think they think that uh like Steven Hillenburg didn't have any idea what was going on there, but he knew. But unfortunately, he didn't make it, or like he didn't live long enough to like you know see this happen, and that's mainly because of ALS. So yeah, unfortunately, you know, R.I.P. Steven Hillenburg. All right, so we're gonna head into uh, downtown before we end this whole thing off, which I'm assuming is gonna take forever to load. So, Ugh. gotta love this game on the Switch, buddy. Downtown Bikini Bottom, once a bustling metropolis, now a debris-covered crater. A debris-covered crater. SpongeBob, the robot. No, those. All right, guys. So we're gonna end it off right here. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you leave a like. Make sure to subscribe for some more SpongeBob rehydrated content and Cosmic Shake content for the future. And I'll see you guys next time.